Hi, I'm Sleepy, and welcome to the redesigning of Zelda. Last time we did Sheik, which you can find right here. There's a lot of Zelda mains out there, so this video is for you. Zelda is really tough to redesign, but that seems to be a running theme with poorly designed Smash characters. <coughs> well, was that me? Did I say that? That's crazy. Well, an apology at this point would be disingenuous, because I have a lot of bad things to say about Zelda. I love Zelda, and I used to main her, but let me tell you one Zelda main to another. Zelda SUCKS! Her design, especially in Ultimate, is to Dongo Dodo! Zelda really doesn't feel like much of anything. She's unbearably slow, so you'd hope she'd be heavy, right? How rude of you to assume a woman's weight. She's as light as a feather. Okay. Well, well, this can still work. Ness is light and slow, but he hits like a truck. Obviously, Zelda was designed to be good at killing. But, no, not really. She has access to plenty of powerful moves, but they're incredibly unreliable, so she can't close stocks well. Her frame data is wild, and ranges from good to unusable. So, she can't string together any combos outside of guaranteed bread and butters. Characters with poor frame data can make up for it with range, but she lacks that as well. She has a projectile, but it's utter garbage at keeping people away. It seems like nothing she has works at all. She lacks identity and focus, which is funny because her literal secret identity feels way more natural and plays like they fill a purpose. Zelda feels like the afterthought of wanting to put Sheik in the game. Oh yeah, speaking of, remember the last Sheik video when I, uh, I know it was a long time ago, but I discussed how side taunt was the key to switching characters. Well, that's the case obviously with Zelda too, so I thought it'd be fun to change her side taunt as well. So, her side taunt and up taunt have been switched around a little bit, so her up taunt where she like, and you're watching Disney Channel. It's, it's now her side taunt, and instead of drawing little squiggles, she draws a triangle because the triangles are magic in Zelda. Now let me be clear. Zelda has never had a good design, but some Zeldas were worse than others. Some people say Ultimate Zelda is really fun to play as. Some people say that Melee Zelda is a playable character. But those people are lunatics. It's clear that I'm the only one with a sensible opinion around here. Oh, you, uh, you wanna know my favorite? Um, of course, um, my favorite is Smash 4 Zelda. Ahem, <laughs> Smash 4 Zelda! And by the looks of that crowd, I'd say I'm alone on this one. W well, screw you guys! Twilight Zelda may not be as cute or as expressive as the new Zelda, but she had sass. I'm not gonna take this lying down. I'm ready to defend Smash 4 Zelda to the death! because the world needs to know that I personally think my piece of trash character is more fun than these other pieces of trash characters that are also the same character. It's the purest form of nobility. Uh, so yeah, I, I think anyone at this point can tell I'm a bit biased towards Smash 4 Zelda since that's the one I play the most. She wasn't a well-designed character by any means, but at least she was fun. No one's gonna argue that she wasn't a garbage character, but she had great tilts and a combo game. So even if you have to look past the multiple useless moves you have in your clunky ass movement and dying at 50, deep down in that character, there was something there. Fast forward to Ultimate, where she just relies on spamming specials and lightning kick the entire game. It's not fun to fight, it's not fun to watch, it's not fun to use. If it weren't for Min Min, I would call Zelda the most nothing character in the whole game. Her moveset is uninspired, and her playstyle is uninspired. Zelda doesn't function at a conceptual or practical level. Originally, she was a lightweight defense-based character. However, her neutral has always been astoundingly bad, so she's awful defensively. I think that's a really interesting idea. I know for a fact that if she had a good neutral, it would have been a really compelling moveset. How do I know? Because Duck Hunt exists, and I love Duck Hunt. Is it any wonder that Zelda has always sucked? I imagine Duck Hunt, but all his specials are four times laggier and have barely any control or range. That's Zelda. So, we have a lot of work to do to not only turn Zelda into a top tier, but I also have to reconstruct her moveset from the ground up so that she has more of an identity. I have a clear and organic design in mind. I want Zelda to be a really smart character. She's got that 300 IQ play potential. She rewards more creative players like Pac-Man and Steve do. She holds the Triforce of Wisdom. She should not be this 
dumb and one dimensional. So, very briefly, that is the plan. But first we need to change her attributes to fit a new design. Zelda runs much faster. She is still in a dress though, so she's not exactly fast, but she's around the speed of Mega Man now. Zelda has increased airspeed, Zelda can wall jump, and Zelda is significantly heavier, but still at a realistic weight. She weighs as much as Marth and Lucina, making good use of those uh, shiny shoulder pads. Warrior Zelda would make a great costume, actually. Uh, same with Hilda, actually. There's a lot of really good Zelda costumes. Why, why, why don't we have more Zelda costumes? No, 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 get back to the topic. Zelda has way higher fall speed now. She's almost a real fast faller, but not quite. She's no Fox McCloud. But most interestingly is this next change that ties into the last. Despite falling much faster, Zelda now has a floaty double jump like Peach. These two aspects contradict each other, and it's never been attempted, so I'd love to see Zelda test it out. Sometimes weird stuff like this just works when you wouldn't expect it to. Speaking of weird stuff, Zelda is a magic user, so she has lots of weird and funky hitboxes. Her jab is slightly different. Functionally, anyway. Jab 1 is pretty much a sped up version of her Smash 4 jab, but with very generous hitboxes. It has much more base knockback to slightly push people back, which allows her to zone better. Jab 2 still initiates rapid jab, but jab 1 is a little strong, so it isn't always going to connect to the second hit. But jab 1 is safe as heck and combos into stuff, so who cares? It's only guaranteed to connect to rapid jab if you get the inner hitbox by the arm. Rapid Jab is now blue and uses the sound and visual effects from Nehru's Love. Rapid Jab has way higher damage and knockback, plus it's harder to SDI than most Rapid Jabs since it's already hard to land. F-Tilt is by no means bad, I think it's in a pretty good place. But Zelda is supposed to be a zoner, and a move that's this slow should be better at keeping people away. So F-Tilt has more range, but the added range is merely a weak sour spot. F-Tilt was also reclassified as a fire attack and borrows Din's power. Up Tilt has more end lag, but also more hits done to accommodate. It has a ghostly green look to it because it uses Feyror's power. It consists of two hitboxes that go in a semicircle, one close to her and one farther away. They move in an arc opposite of each other. The close one is just light magic. It's the exact same as her current Up Tilt, but less knockback growth. But the upper hitbox is incredibly strong. It kills pretty reliably. This Up Tilt covers so much space, so it should be a great anti-air and combo extender. Ah, remember Smash 4 Zelda down tilt? Man, those were the days. Before Peach stole it and left Zelda with nothing! SSF2 got it right. That down tilt is fast, sends up, and has a satisfying, if not totally broken, spike hitbox. So along with adding the spike, I want to build on the Smash 4 down tilt. It looks quite fast when you spam it, right? But look closely. It had an odd quirk. The move was secretly laggy as heck, it's just that you could cancel that lag with a bunch of your moves. The lag was most obvious if you tried to walk or turn around right after down tilt. So what if there was a subtle benefit to the lag? And I mean really subtle, like the players will probably think it's a glitch. So if you wait out the full animation and Zelda stands up, the spike hitbox on her foot will linger on the ground. It only sticks to surfaces so it doesn't work over the ledge. It wouldn't matter anyway, because unlike in SSF2, Down Tilt will only spike grounded opponents, like Peach's Down Tilt. Hey, look who's stealing from who. The Magic Sweet Spot is a really cool trap that can extend combos from far away. The catch is that it goes away after a few seconds, or if you Down Tilt again. Dash Attack has a bigger initial hitbox. It kills a little sooner, however the late hit sends them nowhere. F Smash cannot be SDI'd easily. Up Smash is blue and uses Nehru's magic. Up Smash comes out faster too. Down Smash comes out one frame faster and ends one frame sooner. The second hit of Down Smash has set knockback and sends up to combo into Lightning Kick. Zelda's grab is still slow, but the range has increased significantly. Zelda's grab uses Feyror's magic for visual effects. Zelda's down throw has decreased end lag. Zelda's up throw is stronger. Up throw also uses the sound and particle effects of Feyror's magic. Forward throw could probably be better, but I could take it or leave it honestly. It doesn't matter much. What does matter are her aerials, so let's yell at Zelda's aerials! <laughs> Nehru Nair. Ne- Nehru- Nehru Nair- Nehru. Neutral Air got buffed a lot. 
In the transition from 4 to ultimate, they utterly ruined this move, and it wasn't even good to begin with. She needs a long-lasting aerial that can space in neutral and can start a combo when it lands. Now, Nair has bigger hitboxes, deals more damage, and has more knockback growth. The move is also dropping constantly for some reason, even after it got patched, so I really think it needs the auto-link angle. Zelda's Nair is just so infuriating. How do you even mess up a move this badly? What were they thinking? <sighs> so... Nair has much easier time connecting reliably, and it will always send forward now, instead of wherever they feel like flying. I'll even triple down on this to make 100% sure that this move will finally function correctly. Nair even has a slight windbox on it to pull foes in. There is now a 0% chance for them to fall out or get sent the wrong way. The next train wreck of a move is fair. Lightning Kick is haha, you know, it's a funny move, but does she need to have both forward and back air be the exact same move? No, she needs something more reliable to space with and get people off of her. If she wants to be a zoner, then she can't be throwing out a laggy hitbox the size of a pebble. She needs a new move. The new fair is a magic attack where she swipes forward and releases a narrow stream of magic straight ahead. It's very, very similar to Mewtwo's fair. It has equally fast startup, equally high kill power, and equally scary shield pressure thanks to Zelda's new floaty double jump. The difference is, it has much more range than Mewtwo's fair. It was specifically designed to outrange people. The downside is having a bit more end lag than Mewtwo's. While it might not sound too bad, even a little bit of extra end lag is much more dangerous for Zelda because she falls much faster than Mewtwo, so it's riskier offstage. It also requires more precision than Mewtwo's. The magic she releases has a powerful tipper, but the rest of the move, as well as her arm, are a sour spot that merely knock people away instead of getting kills. The sour spot does have decent base knockback though, so she can just throw it out near someone to knock them away. Up Air got some cool changes that turn it into a ridiculous juggling tool. For example, it counts as a projectile. Now, when she uses Up Air, it's not connected to her. It stays in one place, and the explosion goes off in the location Zelda was when she initiated it instead of following her location. It counts as a projectile and doesn't really clank, so it kind of just wins. Up Air is as big as Ivysaur's Up Air, and it has a lot more active frames too, just to sweeten the deal. Bear remains as the Lightning Kick. It's a close-range, high-risk, high-reward move. It's the total opposite of the rest of her moveset, but in a weird way, it kind of brings it all together. She desperately needs some hype factor. If she doesn't have this big, flashy finisher, she'd be a total goober like Olimar. Like, yeah, okay, your character's pretty smart and hard to play, but who cares? You're a cringe-ass zoner. No one's gonna watch a boring nerd character. But if you end a combo with a lightning kick or a spike, the crowd would immediately forget about the five minutes you spent not approaching. So let's add some risk and reward. Lightning Kick now has even more end lag, making it a death sentence off stage. The landing lag is the same though. The sweet spot of Bear is bigger and closer to the end of her foot. Lightning Kick also has more base knockback now, so it's better to send people off stage at low percent. Down Air comes out sooner at frame 8, but it also has more end lag. And finally, it's time to talk about specials, because that's a big point of contention against her moveset. <laughs> I'll start my critique with a compliment. Her specials were pretty inspired in concept alone, especially considering she was added in 2001. Zelda didn't have any material on her own, so she uses the three magic spells from Ocarina of Time. It even fits lore-wise because of her relation to the three goddesses. You might have noticed this already, but that was the purpose of me changing the look of some of her standard light attacks to appear more like the goddess's magic. And so yeah, it had legs to become a good moveset. But, somewhere along the design process they screwed up, and we ended with a really weak and boring set of specials that hardly resemble the source material at all. So let's fix them up a bit. Before we look at the normal specials, let's check in on our favorite step special, the Shield Bee. So, Shield, do we have a Shield Bee today? Shield special is called Nehru's Embrace. Fancy new name, but I basically just moved Nehru's love to Shield special. It's much more well suited as a Shield special, I think. It's a bit smaller now and doesn't fully cover her. Much like shield poking, you can attack her exposed body parts to deal damage. By simply moving the move to shield special, it was massively buffed. It bypasses the shield drop animation and it makes it amazing out of shield. In exchange, it has fewer active frames and deals much less damage, now sitting at 7%. 
But Nehru isn't done yet. Neutral B is Nehru's love. But I thought Shield Special was Nehru's love. No, stupid. That move is so weak compared to this Neutral B that it doesn't even deserve the title Nehru's love. So it was demoted and redistributed. Now her Neutral B, the true Nehru's love, has arrived to claim its rightful name. Just because it sounds and looks the same doesn't mean it's not changed. Its mechanics are quite different from Nehru's Embrace. It's more accurate to its appearance in Ocarina of Time. It has super high startup now and lacks a hitbox. However, Nehru's love sticks around for a long time and can protect Zelda from anything. Simply step into the light and Nehru's love will grant anyone who steps inside of it invincibility. It also still reflects projectiles. Excuse me, what? <laughs> uh, Nehru's love? More like Nehru's love train, am I right, fellas? <laughs> uh, but yeah, when I said it sticks around, I meant it stays on the stage. As you can imagine, being able to create your own safe space anywhere on the stage is quite good. But don't worry, I may be insane, but I'm reasonable. It comes with some glaring weaknesses. For starters, it's not 100% true invincibility. It's basically Wonder Wing invincibility, so it'll block everything except for grabs. Another problem is that although Zelda can throw out projectiles and disjointed attacks while she's hiding in the crystal, her damage and knockback is cut in half. But a more important weakness is that Zelda isn't the only one who can use this barrier. There's room for someone else. Anyone can step inside and get the same invincible effect. Even though you won't be able to hurt each other if you're both inside, there's ways to force the other one out. You can obviously grab each other, but that's not what I'm referring to. Thanks to Ultimate's pushing mechanics, you can try and force each other out. I think Nehru's love is well balanced because usually Zelda is at a disadvantage. Zelda is slow and not very heavy, so she usually loses the shoving match. And she won't have as much luck going for a grab because hers is slower than the average grab. That's why, if the opponent keeps using Nehru's love against you, Zelda can just say, Alright, that's enough, and remove Nehru's love by holding B. This is a pretty fun and interactive way to handle invincibility. It's pretty well balanced while also making you feel like it's totally broken. Usually invincibility moves are pretty boring. Case in point, my original plan was for Nehru's love to stick to you and so you could walk around for a few seconds while being completely intangible. Just like it worked in Ocarina of Time. But while more accurate, I felt that it was significantly more lame. This one has more opportunity for clever counterplay and works well with the rest of her moves. Now, on to side B. You have much better control over side B. You can go up, down, back, and loop-de-loop -loop with it. It steers, like PK Thunder. You can chuck out a Din's Fire from the safety of Neighbor's Love if you want, but there are more interesting applications. Din's Fire now works better as a trap. Instead of simply exploding after release, a small flame stays there and floats unassumingly. If someone comes into contact with it, then it will grow into a giant sphere of fire, then explode, reminiscent of the original spell from Ocarina. It also has a bit of PM-inspired functionality. By pressing side B again, you can call the flame back to Zelda, which deals damage on the way back. Up B is kinda dumb. I have issues with Up B. People don't complain about Zelda Up B since she's bad, but think of all the buffs we gave her. If she was top tier and couldn't be edgeguarded, we'd have issues. The first step is giving her better air drift and after up B in exchange for more landing lag and less ledge grab range. While that's a good start, it doesn't solve the point. The main problem is that it's impossible to tell where she's gonna go and she goes super far. So let's solve both with one change. Zelda goes less distance now, unless you pick a cardinal direction. You have many more angles to choose from, and the closer it is to a cardinal direction, the more distance it travels. So going straight up, down, left, or right makes you go further. This gives Zelda players incentive to recover more linearly, while simultaneously making the recovery less linear and stiff. There are so many new angles and distances to work with that it increases the versatility of Zelda's teleport cancels a ton. However, it would be pretty much impossible to get both hits of Upbeat to consistently connect, so I've given up on fixing the first hit, and instead changed its launch angle to do something new. On the topic of consistency, the second hitbox no longer has a sour spot, so it's harder to edgeguard and easier to get kills teleporting into people. Upbeat has five more startup frames now, so it's easier to interrupt the first hit. At lower percent, you can teleport in place to hit them twice. And at high percent, when you can teleport down from the top of the screen and spike them into the reappearing hitbox. Maybe even start the combo up with the late hit downer if you want to be the people's champ. I ended up liking this cardinal direction thing a lot because it's never been done before. It works quite well in my head. I think it's one of those things that's more comfortable done than explained. Down B 
was added in Smash 4, and the knight himself comes from the critically acclaimed masterpiece Zelda Spirit Board, which is a Toon Link game. So they simultaneously replaced Zelda's best move with garbage and then dashed my hopes and dreams of getting Toon Zelda and Tetra in Smash. But I forgive them now. Because as far as Down B goes, Ultimate blows Smash 4 Zelda clean out of the water. If you don't know, the Phantom has five stages consisting of a kick, a punch, and three sword swings. Zelda can cancel the Phantom charging animation and walk away as soon as the knight is fully built. I'm sure you've seen crazy combos with this thing. The new Phantom is sick. In fact, it is literally the only cool thing about Ultimate Zelda. But it also gets really old really fast, so that says a lot. She doesn't have any other moves, so this damn thing has to play neutral for her. I joked earlier about making the Phantom a separate playable character, but if they did that, then he would be here, and Zelda would be right back here. So let's do some retuning, but the cool aspects of Phantom while giving it more weaknesses in the process. Phantom Slash can be cancelled almost immediately now. Zelda can jump or walk away as early as frame 11, and it will continue to build itself. However, cancelling it will make the Phantom take significantly longer to build the rest of itself. This means more opportunities to get hit, and more likely the chance is that you'll use a weaker stage 1 or 2 attack. If you really want to keep him safe, you could spawn him inside Nehru's Love to protect him, because I really like when a character's special moves can interact and build off of each other. The individual stages got some buffs. Stages 1 through 3 are still bad. They do the exact same thing still, but this funny punch move has like one extra newton of knockback. Cool. The sideways sword move was decently buffed, but the real star is stage 4. You see this knight here without a head? Yeah, he's your worst nightmare. The second to last stage is much, much stronger than the full charge knight. It has more knockback and it launches people down and forward affectionately referred to by some characters as the fuck you angle. When the knight is done building itself, it will not activate automatically and instead waits patiently for your command. It sticks around as long as you want. Now Phantom must be detonated with down B. This is lagless and can be done at any time, even while Zelda is still in the middle of an attack. While the Phantom Slash is charging forward, they can still be reflected, but the game will say Zelda still owns the projectile, meaning it won't hurt her anymore. It never made any sense. That Phantom is literally another Zelda's soul trapped inside a suit of armor. She shouldn't turn on herself just because she spent some time in Villager's pocket. Speaking of which, that lore aspect ties back into Zelda and opens some weaknesses that it didn't have. Phantom has 16 HP now, which is buff. But if the Phantom is destroyed, Zelda takes 8% damage to herself as well as making her flinch, so the opponent could potentially start a combo on her by destroying the knight. I think the Phantom is overall buffed, it just can't be used constantly, which forces a more interactive neutral game on both sides. And that's a success! But no celebrating yet, because the last thing to do is address Final Smash. This Final Smash is easily the most broken move in Ultimate. I decided to keep it though. The light arrow from before was pretty good, no complaints from me, but the new one has a lot more personality. It's a unique attack that only Zelda could use, but it's also almost as broken as Brawl Supersonic. So how do I go about balancing it? Well, right now we can kill people at 40%, so that's one issue. In order to work out in 1v1 matches, Final Smash literally can't deal any damage. That means it has a 0% chance to kill unless they get caught over 100. Now that it doesn't deal any damage, the move's duration was cut to a quick and snappy pace. Final Smash charges up at a less than snappy pace and an average retention time because, by the way, the wind is still here and uh, it's still BS. And BOOM! We're finished! This Zelda was infinitely more interesting and accurate than the frustrating bottom tier moveset we've had since Melee. Yeah, sure, she's a better zoner, which is kind of cringe, but she's got potential for big brain plays and deadly combos. If you have the patience to learn her advanced tech, picking Zelda is a wise choice. Ha ha! See what I did there! Don't worry, it's okay to laugh. But before I go, I did want to talk about the channel. I'm sure a few subscribers were wondering why there was a gap between Sheik and Zelda. It clearly wasn't what I planned, but a lot of things come up and I was busy for a while. However, if I'm being honest with myself, that's not the real reason it took so long. I simply didn't want to work on it. I think that creating videos weekly is a bit stressful at the moment, so I'd like to slow down until I can handle it. The last thing I want is to get burned out halfway through. I'm gonna finish the series, and make other YouTube videos along the way. But I'm also trying to learn to code video games, and make music, and graduate high school, and develop a plan to succeed in life, so I get stressed sometimes. Luckily, you all are very kind and understanding. Nobody's been too mad about it yet. I, I just thought I should explain myself and warn you about the uploads. 
So now more than ever, I'd advise hitting the notification bell so that when I do upload, you hear it. Because for some reason, Mr. The YouTube Algorithm hates me. So subscribe and ring. That's pretty much it. I'm done rambling, so you can go get some rest. I'll stay here in my dimension of darkness. Night ho, friends!